Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel once again. Um, in the previous video I was going to show y'all how to take apart this old um, part 688 40 volt lithium ion battery. So keep this in mind that this battery is damaged and no longer charges. So we're taking it apart to show y'all what the inside of this thing looks like if you haven't done it already. Some people are kind of curious on what these batteries are, what these batteries look like, and what's inside of it, what controls it. And if you're wanting to know if this thing has crappy batteries, well, we're about to show you that today. Please note this video is for demonstration purposes, and this battery is bad. And uh, Hart does not put warranty stickers on these, so if you have to take it apart, feel free because the reason why they don't put warranty stickers on these batteries. It's because they don't take them back. They just send you a new battery with no proof of purchase. As far as receipt, all you gotta do is tell them, be like, hey, I need a new battery because it didn't it doesn't charge anymore. If you don't have an account with them, they will create one for you on the while you're on the phone with them. They'll send you a new battery and they'll tell you to um, recycle this one. But before we recycle it, we're gonna show you what it looks like. And this is probably going to be the final video on this actual battery unless the old one dot unless the new one ends up dying. But right now it is still charging. Alright, so let's get started. We're using a star bit. I don't remember what size it is. Um, need to get a new set though. Because this came off an of actual... Actually, I might have the size of this one. I am using a T10 actually. Star bit for this battery pack. It does take two hands because these screws takes a little bit of you gotta put you gotta put pressure on them and turn them at the same time while you're holding the battery. We're no, we don't we don't care now. We, I mean we, we don't we're not worried about losing these screws or anything, which I will keep them for like replacement screws as long as they're not damaged or all ate up the hell. But since one one of them is because one of them didn't want to come out. It's kind of a pain. And please just note these screws have very, these holes on these things are not all that well. So there's a possible chance your screwdriver might slip off and poke you right in the side of your hand, which does not feel good. But right now, I really don't feel the pain as much. But the screw, this screw here is no good. This is basically throwaway, as you can see, because the the, the uh, insides kind of ate up a little bit. So just so you know, there's actually four screws. Turn on. There's actually four screws that holds this thing on. The, the other four screws on the top of this for the for where the switch is and doesn't have to come off. And that's just, I think that's just to access the wiring panel. But we'll take that apart too and show you. I haven't took that part part off before. I just took the battery out last time. There's the other screw. That's the third one. I don't know if all the batteries are like this, but I know that most of them are star bit, which is the T10. If yours has Phillips all the way around it, then you might have an either an older or a newer version. I don't think that matters, but I think the only part of this battery that takes I think yeah, no, all these are besides on the middle here for this for this for the I guess where the wiring is. These only take four Phillips and four T10 star bits on the outside. But you take the four T10 star bit screws out to open this main thing up to take the battery out. And now since it's loose, as you can tell, the um, cover is off. And this is what the inside of your battery pack looks like. And as you can tell, there's the chip and everything here. And um, right here, this little thing here, this is what this is what's called your fuse. If this thing actually blows, the whole unit is actually done. And here's your pins right here um, that could, that uh, charges it. And if I'm correct, let me think about this for a minute. Okay, yeah, this one right here is your positive pin right here, and this one right here is your negative. 
So even with it being a dead battery, I also try jumping this thing to see if you even try to get a charge back. It's, it, usually that helps with certain batteries. This battery here, you can't jump it. It doesn't work. When I try to, it gets a spark here on the positive. So I know it gets power, just not giving it to the battery. So let's take the rest of this apart here and uh, we'll show you what the rest of it looks like. Sometimes you got to give it a wiggle if you're using your hand to wiggle it out. Like most cases, I'm just going to use a flathead because it's already damaged. So I'm not going to get too much detail about taking this and trying to pull this thing out. Now, since the battery, I didn't know if it was the battery at the time, I just took it out to be gentle with it. it took my time pulling out so it wouldn't break anything. Since it's already broke, nothing else we can do about this battery. Here's the back, here's the bottom cover that the battery sits in. It's just a piece of plastic. There's no metal, no rubber pieces holding this in. It's just one of those things you have to just wedge it out like this. If you don't think your battery is good, you could just wedge it. If you think it is, you could just wedge it out safely. But see, when I first took it apart, I was like, oh crap, this thing don't have a warranty sticker on it. And I'm like, maybe I shouldn't take this apart yet. <laughs> so I didn't take it apart until after I called him to get my replacement just to be sure. But when I asked him, he said, nope, no, there's no return required. You don't need the old one back. So, and that's probably why they don't have uh, warranty stickers on, on these things. But here's what the batteries look like. Now, I am not... A professional when it comes to these batteries but as you can tell these batteries here have no brand name on them they're not even like a, they're not even Samsung batteries or Toshiba or nothing I would thought think that if they would have Toshiba batteries like some rechargeable batteries have for certain tools I think this thing would probably last a lot longer but if you count I mean they say this is a 40 volt but I'm talking I'm thinking this thing is a lot because there's like Let's see, there's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 20, 20, 30. There's 30 batteries on the inside of this whole entire unit. And if I'm correct here, you, you should see, I don't know if you can really tell. But those are the numbers on this battery, and as you can tell, none of them have an actual good brand. I think these are just unbranded batteries. So, you know it has 30 batteries, so as you do the math, I was told these things are not really 40 volt. I heard it's a little more than 40 volt, but I could be wrong. Like I said, I'm not a genius with these. I don't create them. I know about cars and computers, but when it comes to these things, this is all new to me. But... They tell me that the cells go bad in these things, and this is what causes the problem. But, like, this chip here looks fancy. It looks like it's pretty well built, though, as far as the chip and everything's really solid. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't pop up. It's all, I think, I don't, I think they're soldered onto these metal pieces on these batteries. Because it doesn't look like it comes off at all. It looks like it's just all... It's like two separate units, but it's just basically one unit because it's soldered. Sometimes I wonder... I don't know about y'all, but I wonder if sometimes these things are just bad and the batteries could be good. Or if this fuse goes, it just kills everything. Or maybe the batteries are bad and this is good. Or maybe the whole unit's just freaking screwed. I don't know. They claim it's the battery. So I, I, so if that's the case, if it is the batteries that are bad, I'm assuming that this thing probably lasts longer than the batteries. And I guarantee if this thing was able to come off and be replaced onto another battery, if yours actually broke, it would actually save you money to be able to just slap one of these onto your other battery that went bad. Well, if the battery's not bad, I'm talking about the board itself, the motherboard. If the motherboard's bad on one, you think you could just replace it, but it doesn't look like you can, so you'd be shit out of luck there. But it actually looks, I mean, you looking at it, looks like it might pop off. I guess we could find out and see. If it breaks, then I know it's not meant to come off. If it doesn't break, like I said, we're just going to look and see. I know all y'all are probably wondering, that why are you doing that for? for, just for I'm just doing it for, for shits and giggles. Use my language. 
but I'm trying to show you all this as professional as possible. Taking it apart. And as far as what it looks like, as you can tell, it doesn't look, it's just bowing out of, coming off the pins here. I don't know if these pins are just gonna break off of this board or if this board is gonna snap off of it without it breaking. But the reset switch is actually all attached to it too, so this all controls. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it actually comes off to be honest. No, it doesn't come off because this fuse that's right here is attached to this too. So, yeah, see, don't want to do that. So that tells us right there that this thing still has a little bit of power left in it. So, at least we know that. I already had a feeling it was going to do that. So, that just tells me right there it still has a little bit of juice or still has power in it. Because I've never seen this thing actually go down to, one, to like zero bars and not light up at all. But that's what it does now. But I'm actually surprised it still has a little bit of power left in it. So that tells us right there that this thing does not come off. I did that for a reason, so I don't think it was, don't think it was kind of it was kind of stupid. It was, but I already knew it was going to happen. Like I said, I just wanted to show you all what it actually does. All right, so now we know that this thing doesn't come off. We know they're attached to these batteries, but if you do end up wanting to be a mastermind and you want to get this thing off yourself, I would wear some actual protective gloves because I have no clue with these. If, you, if this actually does break off of the batteries, I don't want you to have acid everywhere or leak over your hands burn your skin you have to go to the hospital or whatever so that's the furthest we're going to go with it we know it does not come off um like i said this thing looks fancy it's still got some weight it's still still pretty heavy even without the case so if you want to put it back in the case you just basically just put it back in like that it slides in a piece of cake slap this back on There you go. Let's see if this thing still works. Ah, yeah, see, it still shows that light though. So we know it's got some juice in there. But that is the 40 volt 68H heart battery for the heart push mower. I do not recommend buying these batteries because they're just a waste of time, waste of money. I've had comments on my channel. People say the batteries are a piece of junk, and I do agree. These batteries are a piece of junk. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you want to get a good, if you want to get something good, stay with gas. Get you a gas lawnmower. Do what you got to do. Because I actually bought one right over here, actually, and I, I'll actually show it to you. This is. Oh, hold on. Shit. Anyway, that is the push mower that I got from a friend of mine at work. I only paid like. Um, 20 bucks for that thing. Alright, so. Like I said, that's the battery. If you have any comments or questions about this, feel free to comment. Um, please note, when they do send you another battery, it's going to be the same exact model. And it could be nothing new or anything older. If you have any problems with your battery within a three-year warranty, get it again. Because I'm hoping eventually that the company will actually get a clue and be like, well, we're having too many problems with these batteries, so now we're not going to sell the lawnmower anymore. So now we got to figure out ways how to enhance these batteries, make them last longer than what they, what they are, what they than, than they are. Because if we don't make them last, nobody's going to want to buy them. So we need to figure out what we're going to do. Because that's what's going to happen. They're going to have too many complaints on these batteries eventually. They're just going to stop selling them in the in that particular lawnmower now. When it comes to the newer and the better heart lawnmowers, like the ones that are like three, four hundred dollars, I don't know if those batteries are any different as far as charging or if they last longer. Um, if you want to tell me about that in the comments, you feel free. I don't care. Um, but I see the, I wanted to get the bigger one at the time that had the lights and everything, but I'm like. Now, let me try the cheaper one, see how it works. And now I experienced it in a bad way as far as this. 
Now, it comes with a $3,000 riding lawnmower. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, lawnmower's good, but the battery only lasts 30 to 40 minutes. Why would I spend two to $3,000 on a riding lawnmower that's rechargeable? I can get a gas-powered lawnmower for the same price at Lowe's or Home Depot and be happy with it. I get the whole yard done in one, all, all in one day. I can with a gas push blower too. So, oh yeah, by the way, there's the status of the new battery so far. So, so far it's still charged and doing pretty good. I hope this video helps on these heart lawnmower batteries. Feel free to comment and y'all have a great day.